All right, everyone, we've known for some time that the DNC is corrupt, like always has been. Not that the RNC isn't, but the DNC appears to be generally worse these days. Now, Tom Perez uh, is discounting this whole thing. Oh, we've moved forward, he says. Donna Brazile, who led the DNC for a while, so she probably knows what she's talking about. She's sort of telling all at the moment. Now, I think it ha probably has to do with the lawsuit against the DNC. Uh, over Fusion GPS, I think we're starting to see their narratives collapse. Uh, the Russian narrative's gone. Like, now they've switched to, oh, the Russians bought lots of propaganda. Before it was Russian hackers or Russian collusion. Now that they've realized that that's not actually going to stick, like it's totally untrue, and there's nothing they can do to convince more people that it is true, they're going with Russian propaganda, which is like low-hanging fruit. It's like every state does that. Donna Brazile says that in 2015, now keep in mind this isn't 2016, an active election, this is a year before, the Hillary Victory Fund... Uh, sort of approached the then bankrupt DNC and said, hey, we're going to help you with your money problems, but we're going to need a little bit of something in return, which is basically the DNC rigging the primaries so that she would be the candidate as opposed to any possibility Sanders would be. Now, this is worse um, than what we knew previously. What we knew previously is that the DNC pulled out the stops for Hillary Clinton to be elected. Nothing particularly illegal about that. We then learned that they were involved with directly promoting the Fusion GPS stuff, which is illegal. Uh, it broke election law. Uh, they're probably going to pay through the nose for that and be bankrupt again. We've now found, though, that it wasn't a simple case where the DNC said, well, you know, we like Hillary. We think she's more viable, so we're going to promote her, fuck her opponent up the ass. No, it was more Hillary Clinton and her funds came in very early before the primaries even began, said, hey, we're going to bail you out. Hillary will be the candidate. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know, you're relying upon us because <laughs> you're fucking, you're so stupid at raising money. You've gone bankrupt. Now, this is funny because the Vermont DNC is also bankrupt at the moment. What are these people doing? It's like, hmm, Democrats must not be good at managing money. I wonder why. They spend every penny that they make. They never save anything, I guess. And this has become a perpetual problem for their fundraising apparatus. It's that we it's the weird idea where the Democrats are like, well, demographic shift and everything is going away from the, the evil old, you know, sort of poopy Republicans, so we're going to win forever. But they managed to gain a uh, defeat from the jaws of victory because they can't actually fundraise. They can't actually hold a meeting because they never have any money. Like, they don't know how to make or keep money. They don't know how to spend it. They don't know anything about strategy in the, in the age of social media. So it's wonderful to watch them suffer. Donna Brazil is not exactly see before here's the problem the problem with accountability for what the dnc did is that most democrats honestly preferred clinton anyway and over sanders and even most of the sanders fans ultimately at the end of the day they're not going to vote republican that is that the the people that you would want to convince of collusion between clinton and the dnc of wrongdoing of corruption well, they're all like Democrats and left-wingers. They're not going to trust. When Trump comes out and says, hey, they're being dishonest, they're not going to listen to that. If anything, it makes them want to support the DNC more. They're not going to listen to some third-party candidate saying, aha, the two-party system's corrupt because they're not third-partiers. They're not going to listen to me because they probably, you know, they probably pay attention to the uh, yellow journalists at the New York Times or something, think people like me are like Nazis or something. So like, there's no way to get through them, to them. But this is Donna Brazil. She's a former head of the DNC, Democratic insider. I think they might listen to her. So Clinton is in uh, hot water, I'm sure, over this. And Twitter, nobody's fucking talking about anything but Donna Brazil, the DNC, and the fact that, oh, yeah, the scandal went way further than we thought before. Yeah, this is going to be damaging for the DNC and Perez. Oh, we're good. We're moving past this. I'm not even going to justify it with a response. So in other words, because you can't respond to it, because the DNC lied to everybody multiple times, colluded with a political campaign to the detriment of a campaign that at least among the tech literate youth was way more popular. Sanders cleaned up among people under 25 within the Democratic Party. He cleaned up with the Warrenites. He cleaned up with the left. He even cleaned up a substantial proportion of the business Democrats. What did Clinton do? Oh, he's racist. All his fans are racist, evil, sexist, homophobe, bigot, meh, face of the past. And of course, Salon was the only one that came out to defend him, saying uh, she was goy explaining uh, uh, oppression or something, which was uh, even worse. Hillary Clinton and her funds colluded directly with the DNC with full knowledge 
uh, on both sides, as well as with the media. Uh, that was in the DNC leaks, too, um, to uh, screw Bernie Sanders. That is now known. It is a fact. It's not, uh, it's not up for debate. There's no argument to be had. Now, there are people like H.A. Goodman speculated about this sort of thing quite some time ago before Donna Brazile came out and talked about it. It was kind of one of those things where I know what went on. People on the right know what went on. People who are like, you know, a Goodman, like an outsider, Bernie Sanders progressive. We all know that the DNC was being corrupt, but we can't convince any neoliberals of it because there's no neoliberal to actually fucking tell them, hey, the DNC was being corrupt. They all form a wall around the scandal to try to hide it from the view of their fans. Now we've got someone who's like head neoliberal of the last election saying openly, yeah, there was collusion. Yeah, there was fundraising fraud. Yeah, there's a problem here. It was dishonest and we need a more honest political party if we're gonna go into the future. And here exactly is what I've said about Perez. He is so fucking inept. He is incapable of leading the party. I don't care when these polls say, well, the Democrats have like a 10 point lead on their opponents on average in these uh, competitive center races. It doesn't matter because Perez is not going to be capable of giving them any aid at the federal level. He's not going to be capable of mounting an effective defense against a party that has Donald Trump essentially leading its political strategy. He's going to come in, he's going to browbeat these people into the ground one by one, and pretty soon those Democrats won't have a lead, if they even have one now. What if the polls are cooked? They might be a point ahead. Well, that's not very much. Tom Perez's response to proof by his forebear, the former head of the DNC herself. She comes out and says, yeah, there was fraud. It was worse than before. His response is, eh, don't worry about it. I'm not even gonna respond to it. You're not gonna respond? What about the Democratic lay people that are more progressive, like, the, like again, the Sanders fans, the Warrenites that make up about 20% of your party? What are you gonna say to them when they decide to stop being Democrats and they say, well, why, why bother? They're just as bad as the Republicans. Hell, we know that this scandal's real. Everything on the other side's speculation. Especially when Trump comes in, like he's now doing, and gives tax relief to the middle class so that the next time they file their taxes, they notice, hey, I'm paying like $1,500 less this year than I did last. This is actually pretty cool. When a couple million business Democrats flee the party, and go over and become Republicans and set, throws the Senate into uproar because the Republicans start winning half of those Senate seats again. When that happens, if that tax uh, plan passes, which I would speculate there's a fairly good chance in some form pretty soon it does, because I can't see even the McCain standing against something like this in the form it's going through. How's the Democratic uh, Party going to respond? You can't win the business Democrats. That means you need like the Sanders youth. You're pissing it away. What are you thinking? This is gonna be a nationwide problem for you. You're gonna lose. The young Democrats are gonna pour out in droves for a candidate like Sanders. They're not gonna pour out for anybody else. There, nobody else is willing to come to the fore. Tom Perez is not a leader. He's not, the RNC is led by someone who's generally disliked. The DNC is led by someone who's generally absent. Which one of those is worse? Priebus can be brushed aside. Nobody cares what he says. The RNC doesn't even matter in the age of Trump. The DNC, Perez is technically still the central figure. Look, look at your central figures. Tom Perez, who won't lead. Clinton, who can't lead. The two top Democrats in the country. Sanders doesn't count. He's an independent. He's already left your party again. Yeah, in all honesty, yeah, uh, technically speaking, uh, colluding against him is okay because he was never a Democrat, I guess. I mean, he's legal. It's just unethical to his fans. They're not liking it. And there's your youth vault right there. You could end up with a new, uh, like a Reagan youth 2.0 because Tom Perez is dumb. Donna Brazile is not a Republican. So when she comes out and says there's a problem after denying it for a long time during the election, she shut up. She did what she was paid to do. She said, nope, no, nope, no collusion, no scandal here. DNC, everything's perfectly fair. Held it off as long as possible on behalf of your party. Now you stab her in the back by pretending she doesn't exist. Oh, she's not gonna like that. She'll probably talk about it more. And uh, her ha handful of fans will as well. But all the Bernie fans will. You know, you're, you're gonna get the Bernie fans, the far left, plus the sort of the Warrenite progressives, joining arms with a bunch of third partiers and Republicans to browbeat the DNC. Will Tom Perez continue to lead the party? You know, lead being a relative term. Who knows? He might not even be there in a year. They might kick him out early. 
nope, sorry, Tom, but <laughs> it's not working for us. Maybe Elizabeth Warren can be the head of the DNC next. Get Sanders to lead the DNC. That'd be funny. Someone who's never really been a Democrat who stands for a totally different system from neoliberalism could actually lead the DNC better than Tom Perez. It's, uh, it's rather funny to watch this happen. The Democratic Party keeps getting hounded and crippled over and over and people are worried about like how weak Trump supposedly is. Oh, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. It's not the Republicans right now that are weak. Maybe on paper. In practice, no, the Democrats are totally falling apart. It's like a wagon with one wheel. It's, uh, it's totally unbalanced no matter how you cobble it together. That's about all. Peace out.